It's amazing how fast 20 years pass. Back in 2001, I was in my fourth career running a local preservation organization in Worcester, but ready for a change. When I heard about the opening at what was known as Historic Massachusetts, I sent board chair Clarissa Rowe my resume. Truly convinced I was best for the job. I had state government experience and I had brought back to life a nonprofit, two capital campaigns and just under a million dollars in the coffers when I left to begin a new journey that led me here. So I thought it'd be interesting to describe my first day at Preservation Massachusetts. And then it was Historic Massachusetts Incorporated. And I left a fairly well-organized Preservation Worcester to, to, uh, to become executive director at, uh, at Historic Massachusetts Incorporated. So on that first day, and those first days are always difficult, I think, for anyone who starts a new job, um, I was certainly familiar with the operation, with the organization to a fair extent. And I remember walking into a coffee shop just outside of Old City Hall and I, I bumped into Albert Rex, uh, who I knew pretty well from, uh, from a, a number of uh, uh, challenges we had at Preservation Worcester. Um, and we walked into, uh, into Old City Hall together. And as I entered the office, um, I was a little bit surprised because there I met um, a full-time employee who uh, sometime within the, the next several days told me that she was uh, going to be leaving. Um, and there was a temp uh, who was a, a really nice young lady um, who wanted to continue to be a temp. Um, and, and there was a, an intern who was uh, at that time a student um, graduate student at Boston University. Uh, so as I went to my desk, I thought, oh boy, I have some work to do. <laughs> and as it turned out, um, you know, things worked out pretty well, but I was a little, uh, a little harried uh, on that first day. As a new director, my first question is, where's the money? Thank God for a good board of directors. Lots of strategy meetings, discussions regarding developing programs that would truly reflect the renewed mission of the organization and a new name, Preservation Massachusetts. One of the first things I did was develop the concept of a preservation coalition across the Commonwealth. This network of preservation organizations helped us connect with partners, enhance and promote preservation ideas and collaborate on advocacy efforts. It was in these first coalition meetings that a question was asked, what would really benefit preservation efforts in Massachusetts? The answer was a statewide historic tax credit that would further incentivize the federal credit and provide developers with the necessary funds to take on commercial restorations. Little did we realize how incredibly important this would be to preservation in Massachusetts. As the years progressed, we enhanced existing programs like the annual preservation awards and the Massachusetts Most Endangered Historic Resource Program, which has been in place since 1993. In fact, I based Worcester's Most Endangered list on Historic Massachusetts Program after serving on their selection committee for a number of years. We also created new programs to help us better meet our mission of advocacy and education. One of my personal accomplishments is the establishment of the Preservation Circuit Rider Program. Although conceived in Vermont in the mid-90s, Massachusetts, with the assistance of the National Trust for Historic Preservation, worked with several foundations to raise approximately $600,000 to hire three part-time preservation professionals. So much has been accomplished across Massachusetts by virtue of actually having professionals available to meet face-to-face -face with individuals who have preservation challenges and questions. There have been a lot of wins, a lot of losses, and a lot of learning over the years, too much to go into. I've come to learn that this job has been primarily about people, the people we've worked with and hopefully helped with difficult and emotional concerns, but also about the people around me, an amazing board and a wonderful staff. Preservation Massachusetts has been very fortunate to have a wonderful, strong, and supportive board of directors. From architects, preservationists, consultants, attorneys, and development professionals, they have grown to encapsulate more of the preservation industry and their dedication to our mission remains steadfast.
I learned years ago that having the ability to bring together passionate, honest, and really intelligent people is absolutely essential to being a credible and relevant organization. All of our staff, past and present, have been passionate and have helped PM evolve. I'm so proud that Aaron Kelly, after 18 years with the organization, is taking over the helm of PM as the next executive director. She has the talent, the vision, and the ability to grow PM in a positive way. Everyone should be excited about the new energy, the new leadership, and what Aaron will bring to historic preservation in Massachusetts for many, many years to come. Taking on this new role as the next Executive Director of Preservation Massachusetts is both exciting and humbling at the same time. I'm very much looking forward to this next chapter for me and for the organization. And I just want to give a heartfelt thanks to Jim Igo for his many, many years of service and dedication to Preservation Massachusetts. I would not be where I am if it were not for the opportunities and learning and working with him over the course of my career. And of course, um, many thanks to our incredible board of directors, our absolutely amazing staff, and to all of you who work so hard every day in your own communities to ensure that the historic places that are important to you are saved, restored, and preserved for the future. There are a lot of exciting things ahead for 2022 and beyond, and I look forward to working with you, learning from you, expanding our relationships, and continued collaborations. Thank you so very, very much. So, in my decision to mostly retire, um, I have to say that it's been very bittersweet. Um, I've had 20 really amazing years at Preservation Massachusetts. Um, I've loved almost all of it. Uh, I've loved working with the staff. I've really enjoyed working with our board of directors. Uh, it's been so fulfilling to me um, to have an organization that has grown over the 20 years and has become so much more relevant, more important to historic preservation in Massachusetts. And the kinds of people that we have worked with, uh, whether it's uh, the, the, the little homeowner that's challenged and has issues, or the big developer who we've worked with, with state and federal historic tax credits, uh, has just been so, so fulfilling to me, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to miss that. Um, I do have the opportunity to kind of continue uh, in a part-time role as a consultant. Uh, I believe that's maybe the title. I'm not quite sure at this moment, but I'm going to continue to work on lobby efforts, both state and federally. Uh, provide some support to Aaron, um, I hope, and maybe even get involved. Uh, with some of the development um, as, as I kind of wind my way uh, down to a full retirement. So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank everyone, staff, um, whom I have such a great appreciation for, our board of directors, which is the best board of, best board of directors uh, that I've ever worked with, and what they have been able to accomplish uh, for and with Preservation Massachusetts has just been wonderful. And all of our partners, um, the consultants, everyone that we've worked with, uh, this organization would never have been able to do what it has been able to do without the support of our partners. So again, thank you and uh, we'll talk soon.